Warning. I chain smoke and I say fuck a lot. But I accept myself for the way I am. I accept you too. Viewer discretion advised. Danny Masterson sentenced to 30 years to life for two rapes. Masterson starred on that 70s show, a TV series that was airing at the time of his crimes in the early 2000s. Prosecutors argued Masterson, 47, had relied on his status as a prominent Scientologist to avoid accountability. I've covered Danny Masterson before. As you may remember, when I first started in 2017, I did a lot of videos on, quote, exposing Hollywood. A lot. <laughs> and I know I covered them before, but it seems like he finally got sentenced. But this is a clusterfuck, so we'll try to stay on point. And one of his victims, Chrissy Carnell Bixler, slams Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis after Danny Masterson sentencing. And although I missed the original Instagram story, because they're temporary, this is confirmed by Hollywood Life, September 9, 2023. Because Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis sent letters of support for Danny Masterson, where Ashton Kutcher called him a, quote, role model. And Mila Kunis said he had, quote, exceptional character. So from Chrissy Bixler, Dear Ashton, I know the secret your, quote, role model keeps for you. One that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. In my opinion, you are just as sick as your, quote, mentor. There's a little more to it, because she also writes to Mila, too. But that's mostly about Mila being groomed, pretty much. And like I said, we were going to try to stay on point. So, she mentions a date. February 21, 2001. Well, what happened that night? Kutcher said he and Ellerin were scheduled to go out on their first date on February 21, 2001, the night she was murdered. He told investigators he was running late when he went to the 22-year-old's home and knocked on the door to take her to a post-Grammys party. During opening statements, prosecutors described the scene. Mr. Kutcher looked in the window and saw what he thought was spilled wine on the floor. We believe now the evidence will show that was actually blood. Investigators believe Gargiulo attacked the fashion student from behind when she got out of her shower. Kutcher testified he left when Ellerin didn't answer her door. He assumed she was upset and departed without him because he was late. Ellerin's roommate found her the next morning brutally stabbed to death. Prosecutors describe Gargiulo as a methodical and systematic killer. He's accused of attacking at least four women, three in California and one in Illinois. Two of his California victims, including Ellerin, died. In the LA Times, Saturday, February 24, 2001. Arrest near and fatal stabbing in Hollywood Hills, police say. Los Angeles police investigating the death of a 22-year-old woman and found fatally stabbed in a Hollywood Hills bungalow were close to making an arrest, LAPD officials said Friday. Neighbors said Ellerin and her boyfriend had rented the wooden yellow bungalow just a few blocks from Hollywood Boulevard last fall, but they sort of kept to themselves. Nobody in the neighborhood seemed to know them, said Brenda Wooding, who lives next door. Wooding said Ellerin's home often had many people coming and going. She said Ellerin and her boyfriend also drew attention in the neighborhood because they were in their early 20s and were renting a house in an area with similar properties go for about $2,500 a month. She said she saw Ellerin's boyfriend in front of the house Thursday morning crying and being comforted by friends. Downing said the police did not consider the killing a random act. Well, the person who did this is not running around on the loose in that neighborhood looking for victims. Now, it's important for you to know that no one's accusing Ashton Kutcher of murdering anybody. Let's make sure we're very clear on that. There's some spin out there, people trying to imply that. I'm not accusing. I'm not saying it's not possible. What people are trying to imply is that because Ashton Kutcher wasn't honest during this period, we're going to explain what the accusations against him are, uh, this guy, Michael, uh, the serial killer, was able to go do it again because the cops weren't able to actually process the case because they knew Ashton Kutcher was indeed lying. From the Courier Journal, Thursday, May 13, 2004. The Buzz. Unsolved mystery. The parents of a 22-year-old woman who was murdered three years ago are blaming Ashton Kutcher, the star of Punk, for hindering the investigation into their daughter's death. 
The 26-year-old actor was supposed to take Ashley Ellerin, fashion student, to the 2001 Grammy parties. But when he arrived to pick her up at her Hollywood bungalow, she never answered the door. Kutcher looked through the windows and said he noticed dark stains on the floor, which he thought were caused by a wine spill. So he left and attended the parties solo. When the girl's roommate came home the following morning, she found Ellerin stabbed to death. What Kutcher thought was wine was, in fact, blood stains. The girl's parents, Michael and Cynthia Ellerin, said they blamed Kutcher for not going to police immediately after seeing the suspicious stains. Quote, his behavior suggests he felt she was a disposable date, the girl's father said. Because of him, the perpetrator got a 12-hour head start. So now the story is apparently he didn't just knock on the door and peer through the windows and see, quote, wine stains. He actually went into the house and saw the dead body and freaked out, went out to his car and started trying to make phone calls to figure out what to do, including a phone call to Danny Masterson. I'm not saying you have to believe that, but that's what the story is now. Yes, he was in his car for over an hour outside of Ashley's house, speaking with his manager about what to do to protect Ashton's career and reputation. He then called Danny. I heard the entire conversation. Law enforcement was and is aware that what I'm saying is true. And this isn't just coming from her. This is also coming from a channel called Growing Up Scientology of an ex-Scientologist that has talked to many ex-Scientologists that are close to Ashton and also multiple sources from the LAPD. And was shared with me from other former Scientologists who are close with Ashton, not Danny, not Danny, but Ashton, and I shit you not, shared with me from more than one detective at the LAPD who was working on the case. And those details were as specific as Ashton came in multiple times for interrogations. You know, not like in questioning, you know, not like, not like, did you kill her? But, you know, questioning. The LAPD themselves determined that Ashton was lying about what he saw, didn't see, did, didn't do at the crime scene. And it was immensely, intensely embarrassing. Ashton had to admit to the LAPD that he had been lying. They knew he was lying about having entered the house, meaning Ashton claimed he never entered the house. He claimed the door was locked. He claimed he tried to open the door and it was locked. And that's why he never went in. And then he looked in the window and he saw some stuff. The LAPD was like, this guy is lying his ass off. So anyway, after Christy Bixler wrote on Instagram to Ashton, that his mentor, meaning Danny Masterson, kept the secrets, Ashton and Mila Kunis proceeded to put this video out. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read. Um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. But like I said, this is all a clusterfuck. <laughs> Fucking stoned. I got motherfucking space. Oh, fuck, oh, oh, oh.